in the uh, fall of 2014, I was just getting fed up with social media and I really was thinking I just need to read more. And I have a shelf full of books that I hadn't been reading and I walked over and just grabbed this one just randomly off the shelf. It's a book my uncle gave me a couple of years before that. And this book is called The Lives and Times of Archie and Mahidabel. And the premise of that book is that a, a free verse poet has died and been reincarnated in the body of a cockroach and is able to communicate with the world by jumping around on a, an old typewriter. And so I was like, well, we could make a big typewriter and then I could show people the, the poetry. Burning Man is a festival in the remote desert uh, in the north part of Nevada. And it turns out if you invite people to the middle of nowhere and tell them to do anything they want to do, one of the things that they decide to do is make art when I decided to make my own piece of art for really the first time. That was the very first thing I ever made was a 400 square foot typewriter. Uh, I had a few people who I could call who, who were either wise enough or foolish enough to say yes <laughs> and help me do this thing. Oh my gosh, look at that. Let's go around that one. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I like, I need to do this before I step on. Oh, what does it say anyway? Huh, that's a lot of words. <laughs> The original typewriter had gotten some good press and images of it were floating around the internet. And occasionally people will call me up or email me and say, hey, can you bring that thing out? And I'll tell them I set it on fire and they'll ask if I can build a new one and they'll have, I'll tell them how much and they'll hang up the phone. So I got another one of those emails. Um, Hi, Jason, do you have that piece for sale or can you make one? Sure, like random guy I've never heard of, I'll, I'll entertain you. And I sent him a sort of snarky like, yeah, but it's going to be really expensive and we'd have to rebuild it for you. And 15 minutes later, a guy was on the phone from Mexico calling me up, talking about a private sculpture park at an undisclosed location in Mexico. <laughs> and so I called up the same group of people. I, you know, I emailed. There was a few of them. As your friends are wont to do when it's a really terrible idea, they said, yeah, sure, we'll, we'll help you with that. <laughs> started with the same CAD model uh, that we used in 2015, threw it all away except for the essentially the wireframe, which is really the core of the whole CAD model, uh, and then just started pushing and pulling and trying out different things, did a, an enormous amount of sketching. But it's all also about listening to the team and their knowledge and really absorbing it all because a lot of times, you know, as a designer, I find that uh, there's a lot of competing ideas. Doug is probably my oldest Burning Man friend. He's, he's that guy who can just make stuff work. He built a flying bicycle one year. Um, that was his first big one. He built a 60-foot tower with a spark chamber at the top that captured the cosmic rays. He built a human-powered music box one year. I have these things inside my head, and I just like to get them out, and I think they're unique, and I think they're very different, and I don't think anybody's seen anything like some of the things that I've, I've designed and built. When you go into Burning Man, it's like, hi, I'm the artist, here's my art, would you like to play with it? It's being promoted by the person who built it. Get in there, just go in there. And that, that to me, is one of the most important aspects of these types of events. Very often, he's the project lead and we're all helping him. Uh, this time, I'm lucky enough to be able to turn that around and, and have his support on my project. If you actually look at the entire, like, Blunderwood typewriter, you can actually tell that there's only one piece that this could actually be. You can tell that this is what's going to nest that, um, what's that long thing called? Ding! Ding! I forget what that thing's called. Platten. Platter? Platin. Platin. Right? Yep. 
but you can tell it's, a, it, it's kind of fun to see it all pieced out and see the whole thing go together. This is the platen. Um, inside is a truss structure that prevents the PVC from uh, deflecting in the sun after it's warmed up. Mark's going to be doing a lot of the welding on this truss. This is a reinforcing structure for the inside of the platen. So this is going to be supported by the body of the uh, typewriter and then there's going to be a big tube over this. That's the, the platen itself. So one thing I haven't quite figured out yet is how to do the space bar. And the plan is to take pieces of sheet metal, cut them just right so that they fit in flush with the top surface of, the, you know, of these pipes. I just discovered that the, uh, something, we wrong, well, something was wrong in the CAD because this sheet metal should fit nice and tangent to the top surface of, surface of these guys. But you can see, it's not off by a small amount. It's off by like a whole tube diameter. I think I have to cut this and make it shorter in all of the dimensions that are that are wrong. So that won't be so bad, but it's still a lot of work I wasn't planning on doing that I don't actually have time for anyway. But that is why we do this. We love it. it it's almost Nick's typewriter and I'm just helping. Uh, Nick is a genius of the nth degree. He's especially talented in CAD, uh, computer assisted design. Nick is the guy who actually figured out how to make this thing work. So the plan is we're going to make the entire outside of the typewriter from fiberglass. Jason has uh, miraculously found a company up in Peabody that will fabricate all, all, all this fiberglass for us. We started with building boats for MIT. And we get you know, random inquiry calls once in a while. We didn't know if it was real or a hoax. We didn't know what to make, because obviously not many people call asking for a, a giant sized typewriter. And sure enough, a PDF came with a drawing and right. suddenly it became real. So it was like, oh, we have to have this project, obviously. We have to find a way to do this because it's something we haven't done before. And it's nice that it's a local group as well. This is the exterior skin of the typewriter. That's the left side, this is the right side. The two, we have two doors that are gonna open in the back, and then the two corners are up there somewhere. And then I already have the front and back pieces. If you show up at the asylum tomorrow, I'll push your work. You know? <laughs> I'm not there yet. I'm right. only getting through today. Pop us off the text. You never know. The base of the keys was another big technical challenge. Uh, we settled on using a, a plasma cutter they have at the asylum, cutting out a steel disc that we could weld a flange to that would attach to a pipe. Dube's real genius is anything that requires a computer, computer coding. So when we have a problem like, Dube, here's a giant piece of steel. Can you cut 45 perfect circles into it? 12 hours later, there's a stack of 45 perfectly cut steel circles. My role in the first uh, typewriter was uh, primarily the, uh, the interactive portions. We had a lot more steel this time around, so we made uh, good use of the uh, Asylum's uh, CNC plasma cutter table. We cut little triangular ribs to fit into them to reinforce them. So the key rails, uh, it's a giant four-inch diameter section of steel tube. Uh, we needed it that size so that we could put these inch and a quarter plumbing pipes into it. One of my friends is a contractor. He said, call this countertop place I work with all the time, they'll hook you up. And I went to him and said, hey, can you cut us some marble circles to you know, a pretty tight tolerance? And he said, yeah, that's what we do. And he delivered us a pallet of keys one day. And the metal spinning was made to our exacting specifications by a guy up in New Hampshire. So this is one of the challenges of working in a shared space. I want to paint that stuff. But first I have to figure out what that thing is and if I can move it. 
<laughs> find out who left it there and if they're done or... <laughs> So this is going to keep the actual key surface attached to the support that attaches to the structure. And we're going to dab it on here and it's like a super strong glue that's made just to glue steel and marble. One down, 45 to go. <laughs> I'm just taking an adhesive uh, in a caulking gun and putting a few dollops in four spots and then it's going to, they're going to sit and cure up to 24 hours. And then they'll be loaded up on the truck and they're off to Philadelphia tomorrow. I'll slide myself Thank out. Thank you. I'm so sorry for this day long. Oh, no, you know what? You did 32 okay. keys for me. We did. We did <laughs> you 32 yeah. keys. You don't have to apologize for helping me. Good to see you. <laughs> no, apologize for not doing more. So we lost the letter K, so we're trying to make a new K. So the process of making a new letter is we have to laser cut this uh, etch resist. Once we do that, we can peel back just the section we're interested in. I wish I knew where this K was. I made it. Somewhere, somebody has a big K. Let's see if it actually cut all the way through. Hey, did. Hooray! Okay. Okay. We're going to take this to the sandblasting cabinet. There we go. So that will make it so the ink sticks to it. K key number two. <laughs> we are going to Philadelphia because there's no place in Boston that will let us have the space we need. And our friends at FK Productions in Philadelphia are making big art for a living right now and they have all the space in the world and every tool we could ever want. It's also good to have a deadline. And FK in Philly gives us a great deadline. Every time I make art, I swear to myself, I'm not going to make any more heavy art. No more box trucks. No more moving crews. Next house, I'm going to have a driveway big enough to put a truck in. We promised the client that we would have this thing built and that we would show them it was built. Get everything done, put it together once to prove to ourselves and to the client that it's actually done before we load it onto the semi-truck and send it down to Mexico. So my connection to the Blunderwood team uh, is based on having uh, moved to Philadelphia from Boston. When they reached out to find some space to be able to you know, pull this project together, it was a really easy decision just to be able to step up and a privilege to be able to, to, be able to help them really. We got the truck unloaded and the structure assembled in one day. Uh, yeah, I think today we probably get about 50% of the, the pieces assembled. And the, the next 50 have more sort of unfigured out stuff. Welding on these tubes here so that the floor panels have something to rest on. And once we're done with that, then we can take the stack of steel, which is hopefully cut to the right size, and place them and then adjust everything to make them fit and look nice. So this is going to attach to the fiberglass frame over there. We're going to use this special high strength for your glue. The whole side panel has a different coefficient of thermal expansion than the steel. So when the sun hits it, it's going to uh, change shape in a way that's different than the steel. 
we're hoping that we can get it to float on these pins. Like a glove. Does he have enough room to get by? Well, we have to turn this into a giant black tube that has all of the points to attach it to the typewriter and devise a way to lift it and place it on there without scratching the black part that we're going to have to paint on and then take it back off and cradle it and then do it again in Mexico. This will be the bottom of the platen. The truss that's inside of it is going to mount onto two columns that support all the weight of this and those two mount plates will come out through here. Santa Claus. Well, that's done. That's pretty good. Moving a 20 foot, two, 900 pound tube across the shop is, is always going to be entertaining and challenging. Uh, looking out of my office and seeing it drifting past my office window was you know, a particular highlight of the week. So the front of the original typewriter is this beautiful gold leaf that says Underwood Portable on it. And we were fortunate enough in the first project to have a volunteer who we didn't even know show up and say, hey, I, I can do that for you. I do this professionally. It came out so perfectly. You know, she's a professional gold leaf artist. She works for the MFA full-time restoring frames. And so this time around, uh, we called her up and said, hey, can you still do this? And she said, sure. I mean, it's perfect. Uh, we couldn't ask for anything better. This is a piece that Dube has been working on and so he has designed this structure on the bottom with spokes running out to the outside, and he's planning on taking tube steel and running it through a ring roller to form these big round shapes. So we came down to Philly with the tops and bottoms of the school symbol. The tops are wood, the, the bottoms are steel, and there's gonna be like yeah, steel connecting rods to, uh, we have to weld together. Kept with the idea of just like embedding a like a six-pointed star in the wood of steel that we could weld to and would support the top uh, while having like a clean finished edge. I designed this like with the assumption of precision because like, I'm a software guy. Like, you know, you you, you uh, make a model computer and like of course I, I can make it like that. Like it fits together perfectly. Like it's, and you, know, you have to you have to train yourself to think like well it's gonna in the real world it's gonna it's gonna shift it's gonna stretch it's gonna be a little bit different so you have to build in affordances for that and I didn't do that so we have to solve a bunch of little, like fun little problems. This is actually really close. Right? That is really close. Can you just push that one in? Oh. Yeah. The 
this structure around the outside is really, it's really just visual. Its sole purpose is, is to prevent you from being able to see inside and underneath the structure while you're walking around the outside. And it does vaguely represent some real panels on the typewriter itself. Uh, but that was my main intent, really, was just have some visual block so you can't see inside the thing. Well, that's it. We did it. We're going to take it apart and leave it with our good friends at FK for a couple of weeks. They're going to paint it and put this amazing black paint on the platen, uh, make the space bar look beautiful with their automotive paint, paint everything else black so that it doesn't rust inside. Uh, and then we come back in a couple of weeks and we'll load this thing onto a giant truck and send it on its way. Next stop, Mexico. Yesterday we arrived, we had a long travel day, flew into Mexico City. Oh, I'm Mexico! Yeah, it's awesome. this whole place is like a labyrinth of these trails. They're all built this way. All the new, all of them built exactly like this. These cobblestone paths. Turned out when we got here, they had actually already taken everything out of the semi truck for us, which is great in that it saves us a day's labor at least, but it's a little terrifying because uh, we hadn't planned on them doing that. The site is beautiful. Um, I'm really excited that it's a baseball diamond. I'm a big baseball fan. You know, we're right next to the maze. Kind of crazy to think that I'll have my work in the same place as a Botero and a Calder and a, a Richard Serra and all these other amazing sculptors and I way way around the corner. Uh, obviously, I'm never going to be in their caliber, but just to even to be the bleachers in a place like this is an honor. We we're having problems with the paint drying because the paint didn't dry. So as we're unpacking it now, we find that the paint surface is mottled because it stuck to the packing paper. The finish is what you see. If the problem was the understructure paint, which nobody ever sees, no big deal. But the surface finish, this is what we're having the problem with. So I was banging this piece to center it back on the frame. Well, it's only attached to this temporary support frame with wire cables. And during shipping, it slid. So when we lift it up after lunch, we can put it on the uh, frame I bolted into the ground this morning. Trains on boats, I never had a close call like that. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. 
Everyone still has all their hands. So Nick hit his head pretty bad. So he's he's not feeling okay. So he's lying down. I just stood up a little too quickly and whacked my head against this beam. I was just moving fast and forgot it was there and whacked my head. I felt my neck crack from the front of my head all the way down to my middle of my spine. I think I'm fine though. Fresh typewriter in the morning. Smell it. We arrived in a cloud of dust. Mm -hmm. It needs to be level. Okay. okay. Down here, we find that there are some things that got crunched during shipping, and now we have to fix them. And we're fixing them with the help of this welding crew. And this welder, the guy who's the foreman on the welders, he was very knowledgeable, and we could just show him what needed to be done, and he did it. ¿Qué les parece el proyecto este? Está increíble, la ¿Sí? verdad, está muy bonito. Dicen que es mucho trabajo, pero pues pero lo vale que la pena, hicieron, ¿no? Pero lo estuvo muy bueno también. Pues sí, apoyar <risa> nada más con lo que se puede. ¿Y hace cuánto que están haciendo este trabajo? Aproximadamente desde los 12 años, soldo. Mm. Él de los 16, 16 años. Looking for a thin piece of galvanized, like, uh sheet metal that might wrap around this to hide this. The thing we brought is too big. Sí, sí, lo conseguimos. Un pedazo ¿Sí? de lámina. D dos, uno de cada lado. Uh -huh. yeah. Sí, ahorita lo conseguimos. Can you lift your side up, too? to set those ribbon spools on this type on the big one up so that they come out like this because this interferes with our fiberglass doesn't go down like this it's straight across and so we're trying to see if we can cheat and move them in to there but it just doesn't look quite right because then it hangs out into the letter hammer area like that the other possibility is if we cut a hole in the sheet which you know no one will see because under the spool we'll be able to get in there and weld and we, we could uh, weld spacers uh, use some tube steel you walk up to the typewriter, this is like right at eye level. We want this to finish to look, to look really good, to help sell the illusion that yes, this is a typewriter. There's, there's some ink up there and you're about to put in some paper. Yeah, it's too much. Yes. Yeah, three and a half. Three and a half. Perfect. Okay. Let's see if you can take the black part and twist it counterclockwise. That's right. Yeah. Oh. No. Okay. <laughs> That's not gonna work. Good effort, though. against that piece, that should be against that piece, so that should go behind uh, there. There we go. I feel like a dentist. <laughs> So Abby 
anything we asked her to do, she, she was ready to do it. Can you get down on the ground and lay in the dust <laughs> and, and fasten these things for an hour? Sure, no problem. When you're making art like this, people just sort of present themselves to you in ways that you just would never expect or feel reasonable asking, but they'll just do these things for you. I am tightening all the feet, so I guess it doesn't move. I'm redoing what Jason did yesterday, except I'm doing it better. <laughs> I'm almost done. I'm not sure how many I did. There's a lot more than I expected there to be, for sure. <laughs> But it's fine because it's nice and cool under here. I kind of feel like a lizard. It's nice. <laughs> if we can get the fiberglass done by noon, then the afternoon is... What is the afternoon? The afternoon is just touch up. Oh my god, that's hot. Uh, so we are putting out the letters. So this area is called the letter hammer area. Uh, so if you're on a real typewriter, you have letters that sit here and they fling up and hit the platen up there. Um, and because that would be both impossible to make and insanely dangerous, uh, we have this nice wooden area where you can't fall through and kill yourself. And instead of just having all the letters, which is boring, um, we have taken the first line of the first Archie and Mahitabal poem, and it's, expression is the need of my soul. Uh, it's a little Easter egg for people to figure out. It's challenging. It's in mirror imaged and reversed and in a different language. <laughs> and we're taking out the spaces between the words. <laughs> <laughs> We just glued the edge of the fiberglass, yeah, we're good there, to steel. Now it can sit overnight and cure. Actually, perfect, let's do that. Okay. All right. Big moment. Yeah, we can use keys for weights on the front. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Anything flat can just... Yeah, can... right. Here it is. And we were wondering to the woods. Yeah. 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 Nice work, Doug. Last day. So, plan today. Congratulations. Thank you, everyone. Nice work. It's been awesome. Um, plan today is to finish up. We're gonna, we have a little bit of gluing left on the sides and a couple spots underneath. Yeah. All right. Well, we have to glue the angles on the inside because they had not been re glued and they came off. Mm -hmm. And so, in order for the glue to set properly, you need to put pressure on it. And we did that before when they were horizontal by putting weights on it, but we can't do that in place. So this is gonna be on this side and some bracing on the other side, and we'll push those together when we get the, um, get the glue in. That'll provide the pressure we need for the glue to set properly. Even better. 
The other artists who come visit are definitely going to want to see how this was made. Yeah, they'll be like, look at that flaw there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Do we walk around and say, oh, man, there's a gap in the Richard Serra right here? Yeah. Like, well, yes. Yeah. And usually I'm like, oh, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> but we're not like, oh, he fucked it up. We're oh, like, oh, he's human. But check that off the Check writer is 99.9% oh oh assembled. Man, there we go. Is there any other pi in our pile over here we forgot? Oh, Wait, where's Abby? Here. Abby, come get your high fives. Great spot to be slippery too. You're not gonna hurt yourself if you fall at all. Did it! Yay! Done. All right. All right. Let's see if I can do this without showering. Also turns out when you wash this thing, some of the heat comes off. You get back to the yeah. color. That's how it's supposed to be. Awesome. Oh, those doors look good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good man. The doors of my house don't work this well. So we're up here? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we got the burn mark and the... Excellent. First key! First key! Tubes. Beautifully done. Ribbon spools. Top details. One giant PVC tube coated in some sort of fantasy special purpose rubber. This is aluminum clad, uh, some kind of plexi plexiglass, del rim. These are Nick's hand milled black anodized screw heads. Fills beautiful. Carriage return lever, complete with spring action. Let's look inside there. Giant A-frame supporting the giant platen. Here, Nick, operate those doors. Oh, yeah. yeah Operable doors. doors. With the chain. This fancy MMA glue. There's the inside. A whole lot of welding. A 
it's hard to sometimes stop and think about how many people are willing to help you do something just insane and and pointless, <laughs> but but fun pointless. Um, the one big difference between this and the original is the original, I had a whole week of watching people play with it and and have their minds blown and really get to enjoy it. And this one, you know, we finished a few hours ago and now tomorrow morning we're, we're leaving, so we don't get that sort of, did it, did it work? <laughs> you know, do people like it? It looks so great. Definitely an improvement visually over the first one. Yeah, it feels more like a, you know, something to sit on a desk and not just a wooden model of a typewriter. It's like a physical embodiment of the process of producing poetry and literature. I think I miss, you know, anything you make, you put your, a year of your life into, you, it would be crazy not to miss it, and not to think about it, but you know, it's a, an incredible opportunity, you know. Um, I'm not a, I'm not Richard Serra, I'm not Ai Weiwei. I don't get to do this every day. You know, okay, so in Ai Weiwei, there's, you can walk through it. Richard Serra, you can walk through it or around it. But this is the only thing here that I've seen that you can actually climb. That's what separates us, I think, from the fine art world. Of, I made it, you look at it. This is like, well, no, no, come on, come play with us. You're part of this too. April 20th, 2019. Thank you so much for the opportunity to bring our typewriter to your incredible collection. We are humbled to join such an amazing group of artists. Unlike your other pieces, the typewriter is designed to be used. It will collect scratches and other signs of wear as you and your guests climb on it. Please don't worry, these are signs that it is being loved. Our team has put over 2,000 hours into this artwork. It was assembled in 12 shops in three cities. The large version is a blend of seven different typewriters that I have collected. I give you this one as a token of my appreciation. One final note. The original artwork was inspired by the book Archie and Mahinabel. Please enjoy this copy. Jason Turgeon and the entire crew. All right, that's it. We're done. Thank <laughs> you.